Hi everyone, this is Ms. Moore and today we are starting our biology unit which will be focused on genetics and in our lesson today we'll be looking at DNA. What is it? What does it look like? And how does it work? We're going to start by watching a short introductory video called What is DNA and How Does It Work? available on YouTube at this link right here. This video was produced by Stated Clearly by John Perry, and it provides a rather detailed introduction to how DNA contributes to a living creature. It'll look at the genetic code, DNA transcription, translation, and the importance of proteins in the chemistry of life. So it's going to provide you with a pretty detailed overview of DNA and its functions. And in today's lesson, following the video, we'll be looking at specific aspects of the DNA in further detail. Please pause the lesson video here while you watch the short introductory video on DNA. So in the video, they described DNA as a molecular blueprint, a chain of molecules that acts as a blueprint for a living thing. And how does it work? We saw that DNA is copied into a different type of molecule called RNA, which carries the instructions for how proteins are to be built. We're gonna be looking at all of these concepts in detail in today's lesson. Let's start with the structure of DNA. What does this molecule look like? DNA is a long chain-like molecule that contains the genes of an organism. The letters DNA stand for a pretty long name, deoxyribonucleic acid. Where do you find DNA? In the nucleus of every single cell in your body and it plays a key role in heredity, the process of passing on traits from one organism to the next. Many scientists believe that the discovery of the structure of DNA, like what it looks like and what it's made out of, was the single most important biological breakthrough of the 20th century. We credit this discovery to scientists Watson, Crick, and Wilkins, who shared the Nobel Prize in 1962 for their work on discovering the structure of DNA. A DNA molecule is pictured here. And it has this interesting twisted ladder spiraling staircase look to it, which we call a double helix. The sides of the ladder, these parts right here, are made up of five carbon sugar molecules. Called the deoxyribose sugar and phosphate groups. Which contain hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. The rung part of the ladder is made of something different. The rungs or steps of this ladder formation are formed by pairs of substances called nitrogen bases. There are four types of nitrogen bases. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. We usually symbolize each of these four bases using their capital letters, A for adenine, T for thymine, C for cytosine, and G for guanine. Together, the sides of the ladder, the five carbon sugar and the phosphate group, combined with the rung of the ladder or the step of the ladder, the nitrogen base, form what's called a nucleotide. Here's a diagram of a nucleotide. The phosphate group and the sugar form the side of the ladder. 
and the nitrogen base forms a rung. So how does something like this form something that looks like this? You have to kind of picture many of them being connected. Here's the side of the ladder, the sugar and the phosphate, and here's the nitrogen base. It pairs with a different nitrogen base, and they connect as follows. Now hopefully you can start to see the structure of a ladder emerging. So how do these different nitrogen bases pair up? Nitrogen bases don't just combine randomly. The two bases that make up each rung in the DNA ladder are combined in very specific ways. The combination method was actually discovered by American biochemist Erwin Chargaff, who found that in any sample of DNA, the total amount of adenine is equal to the amount of thymine. The same is true for the amount of guanine and cytosine. Using this important result, scientists Watson and Crick reasoned that adenine always pairs with thymine and that guanine always pairs with cytosine. In the late 20th century, we were able to identify the molecular structure of these bases, pictured down below here. You don't need to remember these complex molecular structures. All you need to know is that adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. Let's try an example. Consider the following segment of DNA. What are the corresponding nitrogen bases on the lower half? Please pause the video here while you try this question. To solve a problem like this, we have to look at each individual nitrogen base and ask ourselves, what does that base pair with? Adenine pairs with thymine, thymine pairs with adenine, guanine pairs with cytosine, and cytosine pairs with guanine, and so forth. So what does DNA do? What's its role in your body and why is it essential for life? Practically everything your cells do, whether they be liver cells, skin cells, or bone cells, they're able to do it because of proteins. It's your proteins that allow your cells to perform specific functions within the body. Here's some examples. Enzymes are proteins that catalyze biochemical reactions, meaning they speed them up or they allow them to happen at all. A great example of this is amylase. This is an enzyme found in your saliva that breaks down starch into sugars. Another example of a protein is a hormone. Hormones are proteins that transmit signals within your body. An example of a hormone would be something like insulin, which regulates how quickly you metabolize glucose, basically controlling your blood sugar levels, preventing them from spiking too high or dipping too low. An example of a structural protein would be something like keratin. These are responsible for giving your cells physical structure. Keratin is a protein found in your hair and nails. And you may have seen at the store when you're shopping for shampoo, keratin enriched products, which promote stronger, healthier hair. So what's the relationship between proteins and your DNA? Well, we're slowly getting there. Proteins are built out of molecules called amino acids. The structure of the protein, i.e. how those amino acids are connected, determines its function. So if amino acids are not assembled in the correct order or in the correct orientation, the protein will not work. So who tells us how to assemble these proteins? How does the cell know what order to put them in? Well, the instructions for how to do this are stored in your DNA. During a process called protein synthesis, these instructions are copied out of your DNA by a molecule called RNA. 
RNA then takes this copy of the instructions outside the nucleus to the site where the proteins are put together. This is called the central dogma of molecular biology and can be summarized as DNA makes RNA makes protein. We're going to learn more about this complex process in our next lesson. Okay, that's it for today. Time to work on assignment one. Please don't forget to check your solutions before turning in your work. Bye for now.